Many Americans are headed back to work this morning. There is one big problem in today's labor market, and that is stagnant wages. I want to bring in John Hilsenrath, whose article, America's Searches for Its Pay Raise, is on the front page of today's Wall Street Journal. Take a look there. And we have been watching wages really stagnate for a couple of years now. John joins us right now with more on this. John, good morning to you. Hey, Maria. Good morning. Now, we've seen McDonald's and Walmart and a handful of companies raise the minimum wage. How does that fit into this whole story uh, that wages are sort of stuck and have been stuck for a couple of years? So we we might be starting to see the glimmers of some increases in wages. But what we what we tried to do is to figure out, all right, where is this going? Everyone has been saying that when the unemployment rate comes down, then there's finally going to be enough pressure in the job market to start getting pay raises to workers. So what we did is we looked at cities where the unemployment rate has already fallen. Places like Oklahoma City, Houston, Columbus is the one we really focused on in this story. Places where the unemployment rate is even lower than it was before the recession. And unfortunately, we came away with bad news. In all these places, we still haven't gotten big pay raises. And that's the reason that when you talk about these positive headlines, ladies, that you don't get the sentiment, positive sentiment from the average guy and gal out there because they're watching their wages really stagnant. Uh, John's article, John, is one of the most comprehensive in terms of explain to us why people's wages aren't going up. And there's so many factors, multiple factors, in terms of use of part-time employees, temporary workers, but also a little productivity growth, uh, psychological scars that it, it, this, it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Well, there's, that's absolutely right. There's, there's a lot at play here and there's a mix of temporary factors and long-term factors. And I think that's one of the problems. So, you know, the unemployment rates coming down, that's a great thing that should lead to, you know, to some pressure. And we see it in places like McDonald's. But there's also these long-term factors. You know, we talked to a lot of people in Columbus, Ohio, for example, about competition from overseas. So if you're a manufacturer and you can hire workers in China at $2 an hour, and there have been academic studies that show this, it's just going to put downward pressure on the wages of an American worker. And that's a long-run problem. You know, it's also the case that more and more of the profits the companies are earning are staying with shareholders and not going to labor. That's another long-run factor that really preceded the recession, and it's continuing. And to your point, John, you're talking about shareholders, and there's a real divergence between Wall Street and Main Street. Uh, For example, we're seeing the Dow Jones Industrial Average right near its all-time record highs, and yet you still have average Americans struggling. We just had a great chart up there of the labor force participation rate, which shows the peak and then the drop. And, And while it just eked up just recently, it's still at these levels that are absolutely pathetic that go back to the 1970s, which show that so many Americans are either disgruntled or tired or just getting out of the labor force altogether because they're not seeing wage growth. And the people who are working are taking jobs that are basically part time or not where up to their level. Right. Multiple part time jobs. And, you know, and I think this speaks to a problem that political leaders in Washington haven't, they they all see a problem and they they don't agree on how to address it, which is that, you know, we have this bifurcation of income. There's a lot of frustration out there about, you know, the the best, the the wealthiest Americans, the elite, the 1% doing really well and everybody else struggling. And when you look at, when you talk to Democrats and when you talk to Republicans, they have two completely different sets of solutions for this problem of, you know, a hollowing out of the middle class. Mm. Democrats, you know, they, they want to raise taxes on the wealthy. They have, a, you know, they want to raise the minimum wage. And what Republicans are saying is just get the government out of the way and let the, let the economy, you know, let the private sector take force. Everyone agrees there's a problem and there's no consensus on how to fix it. John, are you expecting anything to shed light on this tomorrow when we get the jobs number out? What's most important there in terms of wages? Well, you know, absolutely. Every one of these job numbers is really important. Uh, So you have to see the unemployment rate continuing to come down. You know, the, the, the less slack there is in the job market, the more power that puts in the hands of workers as they switch uh, one job to another. So we're going to look at the wage numbers also that are coming out tomorrow. And then, of course, you know, these conversations always seem to come back to the Fed. The, the, a lot hangs on this wage question at the Federal Reserve because they want to see the unemployment rate coming down to a point, you know, where they're starting to see some wage growth, starting to see some inflation growth before they're comfortable starting to raise interest rates. So, you know, every one of these jobs numbers 
the market gets very excited because it could affect the way uh, the Fed makes its next, next interest rate move. Yeah, but shouldn't we just take June off the table? I mean, we're not going to see a raise uh, rate increase in June, correct, John? Take it off the table? Regardless uh, I, I, I of think, tomorrow's uh, number. Yeah, I think you're actually right about that, Maria, and I'll tell you why. Because if we get a gangbuster number tomorrow, yeah. you know, I think it'll look a little I think it'll look a little off to a lot of people at the Fed because the growth numbers have been so weak and they're going to and they're going to say, "All right, let's take a little bit more time to try to figure this out." So I think they discount a gangbuster number and then, you know, we're looking to July or September at the earliest. Yeah. All right, John. I know you're going to be with us tomorrow when the jobs number come out. We'll talk more about that and your right. uh, front page story on wages. Thanks, John. We'll see you later. Thanks, Maria. John Hilsenrath joining us from the Wall Street Journal.